Oh, no, you don't. No way. A banner, not on my watch. We are on the noisy east side. And I thought, <laughs> I have a shelf to flush. I know that just looked radical, but it's the only way I can get my Catlia Dawiana out of her pot. <laughs> It's just a quick flushing session. I don't know how long the video will be because I thought while I'm doing this, might as well see if you are up for, yeah, well, my Tenebrosa Aurea. You see the pots are breaking. They're so brittle. That's why I prefer to grab them by their bases and see if I can't pull them out. But yeah, anyway, I thought we could have a look at some orchids together as I flush them, give you an update. Catlia Dinard Blue Heaven is in sheath, all that fun stuff. So, because my pots are breaking, <laughs> I have to be a little bit more, let's say, inventive with how I get my orchids out of the pot. We also recently repotted Digbiana here. Hang on a second, it's a little bit cumbersome. Her mask is bigger than the pot, but she can do with a good flush and all that fun stuff. My intention is not to wash masks today, just to hang out with you on the east side. And normally I like to flush all my orchids in one go, in one section. But I have to say that the RO system is important. I have many orchids that need the same kind of treatment, so I'm doing this on a daily basis, shelf by shelf. I have Tom Firmby making me very aware that I have pests in my pot. So when I see something crawling, I pay attention now. The thing is, I can't do anything about my pests in the pot. <laughs> it is what it is. We'll have to see if that is what is taking out my orchids, but I think it's mainly my winter climate because other orchids in the same setup, they're doing fine. But, you know, at least I'm aware. And when I just saw something scuttling away, I thought, hang on a second, and remember Tom Firmby. But it's good to have you here on the east side. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Little chit chat, little look-see at orchids. And I feel a bit bad for not cleaning out the masks today. I just have to remind myself, take it in stride. I am in southern Spain after all. And there is always mañana. <laughs> okay. So what I'm doing here is also strategically placing the orchids in such a way that, for example, a Mirme Catavola Francis Fox does not possibly transmit Fusarium to other orchids as the water flows. If I'm a little bit staggered in my speech, that is twofold. Because I am on the east side, I have a lot of noise pollution. It is August after all. Life beyond the hedge is busy. But I'm also seeing scale, which I treated yesterday. And I'm just double checking to make sure that they are in actual fact dead bodies. <sighs> Unfortunately, they have left their mark on some of the leaves, but still. Anyway, let's get to splashing around. We'll start with Catlia Dawiana. She grew a beautiful new growth that is now starting to grow its root system. And on the other side of the pot is evident she's starting another new growth. So let me turn her around. See these curling leaves? That's where scale have been hiding and they've been treated. I don't like this one bit, but these are the old seedling leaves. So they have served their purpose. I I think I could actually cut them off. I'm just going to leave them for today. Again, I know I have a feeling this video is already going to be quite lengthy. <laughs> Hello from Siliano at the same time. But yeah, she's doing beautifully. Look at this. Gorgeous new growth. No sheath. Beautiful new roots coming. And then roots are also extending. And here's the next new growth. That is a first. Normally, I only ever get one growth out of her per season. I'm not saying that we're anywhere close to having blooms with her, but you know what? She's alive. It's probably something you're going to hear quite a lot. <laughs> not just with this lot of orchids, but in general on my channel. It's probably something you'll hear quite a lot. I'm going to be emptying out the masks into my Benjamini Ficus trees because I'm replenishing the reservoirs with fertilizer or just plain RO water, depending on what the orchid is doing. So I have a huge bucket of beautifully fertilized RO water at 600 parts per million and the full concentration 
of those 600 parts per million is going into my Dawiana pot and she is ready to go back on her shelf. This is Lelia Tenebrosa. Variety Aurea has never bloomed for me. Oh, but she's growing. Hakuna Matata, look at this growth right here. It's getting to the, it's gonna be about the same size as the previous growth. She's always been somewhat of a scale magnet, but she's clean now. The traces remain though. And she's starting on new roots as well. Just starting. So tempted to repot her, but I think we can just leave her alone for another year. Everything looks to be draining nicely and properly. I've got a little white fly here, a little spider there. You see, Tom Fernby, if you're watching this video, I am paying attention. But I am also not treating the root system for any pests. I honestly don't have time for that. So they get what they get. And whoever lives in the pot, well, just make sure you keep my orchids alive. Thank you. Okay, so Tenebrosa is in active growth. She is also going to get 600 parts per million of fertilizer. A ver. See them all crawling here? This is, these are the ones, well, I just squashed it. But you see all this right here? I don't know if I can get in close. A ver, are you going to come with me? Oh, that little spider, I don't want to hurt it. Let me see. Get you in close. Maybe you can see what's crawling in my pots. I don't think they're dangerous. But at least now in this pot, there's quite a colony that we can actually see them. So if you think that these are dangerous, let me know. And then also, how do I dress them? Look at that. Ooh, they're a bit freaked out. They got a little bit of a washout. <laughs> It looks really gross on camera, doesn't it? Anyway, you let me know. Maybe my spider is also feeding on them. Maybe there's a little bio climate going on in my pot. The spider gets its dinner and my orchid is fine. Be interesting to hear what the experts have to say. Feedback is always good. So here we have my Dinard Blue Heaven. She's absolutely gorgeous. And she has a sheath right there. I don't see, hang on a second, let me turn her around. Oh, no, there's nothing in there. Too soon to call. She usually blooms for me every year regularly, but you know what? <laughs> the minute I get too confident and say, we'll see her blooms, you know, like end of September, beginning of October. <laughs> what? She'll skip this year. So I'm not even gonna say anything. She does need a repot. She really, really does. Even though the water is draining well, even though she has space for another year. Eh, you see how the pot broke? Huh, da, 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 da. That's why I lift her up by the base of the orchid herself so that I can actually get her out of the pot. And there's no bugs in this pot. Hang on a second. Let's lift you up. <laughs> Looks all a bit radical, doesn't it? What a shame. These pots, okay, the first ones that broke for me were the 15 centimeter pots, and that was when I was repotting. I used to bleach them after each repot to make sure that there was nothing in them for the next orchid, you know, keeping everything sterile. And the 15 centimeter pot started to break quite quickly. It took me about two years of having them in the pot with a repot and a bleach. Yeah, the pots that are breaking now, that is just age, but it's a pity. It's the big ones, because that also involves big orchids. At least I can get these size inner pots. That's still a good thing. So we'll focus on the positive. All right, who's up next? Oh, haha, -ha, look at this. Any guesses, any guesses? I wish you were here with me. We could talk about this. Oh, and you can't see the tag, but look, this is pastoral innocence. Great growth, very bizarre growth habit, but I guess she was really reaching for the light. But look at this, we've got a beautiful sheath. Now, she did push three buds for me, but at a time of year that they blasted. So I wonder if we're gonna get it right this time because this growth grew during the best time of year and it's maturing, hardening off during the best time of year. And it looks like another eye is pushing 
down here. It's swelling. I took off the base, all the dead parts of the sheath down here, just to make sure that no scale takes that growth out. And who knows, maybe it's still going to push this season, which would be awesome. There is still time. My growing season can last all the way up to mid-November for most of these here. She's a big girl too. 600 for you. You are welcome. You're welcome. Drink up, girl, drink up. We want blooms. Hello from Siliano. It's his hour of power. <laughs> As I was saying, we want blooms from you, so drink up. Okay, Fushu Glory, happy holiday. I saw some scale at the base, which I was treating just before we got into the meat and bones of this video. She has grown a fantastic new growth. Turns out we are back to bifoliate. <laughs> bifoliate, unifoliate, bifoliate. So it is a, it's like a staggering. Unifoliate, bifoliate, unifoliate, I don't know. And this is the one where I also saw a little bit of creatures. I'm not going to show everything that is crawling around in the pot. Unless, of course, it's beautiful root tips. But there's none of that. To be quite honest, I think these are the creatures that feed on the decayed material in the pot. And they're welcome to it. Even though I am in Lekka and self-watering, there is decay in the pot. As with anything that is alive. If you see my inner masks, please do not cringe. Let me tell you that during the summer, I am more concerned about making sure that the orchids are well taken care of. The masks usually start to get cleaned up for when I move things, prepare things for getting them indoors. Or, for example, if it rains and I can still have them outside and it's not blistering sunshine, then they get removed from their masks and then there's a long day of mask cleaning. <laughs> it's a big operation. What have we got going on down here? Garlic alcohol. We need more. Note to self. Look at your orchid from all angles. You see that eye there? Yeah. That's not happening. All right. Here we have the beautiful Lodigesia Costa Skinnery. And uh, <laughs> I'll put up the name. <laughs> Forgive me, Michael McCarthy. I keep forgetting that name. It's a beautiful name. It's an easy name. I don't know why I keep forgetting it. Something gorgeous with A. I love that name. It's actually really pretty and I shouldn't forget it. But I got this orchid from the orchid room back in 2020. And this year in 2023, she is just rocking it. I don't know if we'll see any blooms, but look at these four new growths that we saw coming out earlier in the season. Look at them all. One, two, three, four. That's the first pushing new roots. So if we wanted to repot her, now would be the time. But we did that last year because I was hoping to leave her alone for another two years, three if necessary and if possible. I know that I can't do three years now with four new growths, each of them growing their own root system. In two years, I'll be repotting her again. However, I did do it last year in anticipation to the fact that this orchid is now long enough in my collection and mature enough that she should be blooming for us at some point. And with four new growths, I mean, hello, at least one would bloom out, maybe, hopefully. <laughs> and as she is growing new roots, let's just have a look at them. You see how beautiful they're coming out there, like the new teeth of a baby, all cute and nice. Look at that. Right. There, I hope. Uh -huh. New roots. Big orchid now. 600 parts per million. Enjoy. My Crucero do Sul, my Durigan. Now, if you think I just snapped the roots down there, I didn't. I tried to feel them before. They are gone, so that's why she is on the table flush. And I'm not concerned about breaking any roots. She did bloom. And I say that with that tone of voice, with that cadence, because the blooms never really opened properly. Even though she had her calcium nitrate, she had all her fertilizer, even though the roots were growing beautifully, everything was normal. And I had four buds. Okay, one had bud blast. Ah, uh, for me, hakuna matata. It can happen. But the blooms didn't open properly, and I'm 
I wasn't impressed. Usually she blooms gorgeous and big and for a very long time. So I didn't let her bloom out completely fully for the duration of what she can do. I took the blooms off prematurely. She did lose two pseudobulbs in the back. They're the older ones. That's not what I'm concerned about. But what I can see down there, that is what I'm concerned about. Let's get you down. See that white fuzz? Yeah. Yesterday I was back here doing something else and I actually saw this orchid from below and I thought, well, dang. So I treated her for scale all under the leaves and everything. And I did not catch what's going on at the base. This orchid has always, always been an attraction to scale. I, I don't know if it's the Brazilian stuff or whatever. She came from Floralia, but she's always had issues what I would consider a scale magnet. So I'm glad we caught that. Seeing as she's not doing anything much, yes, she's working on roots to a degree. What I'm going to do with this pot, because she's a big orchid, I'm taking half of what my 600 parts per million fertilizer quantity is, putting that into the reservoir, and I'm filling it up again with half of plain RO water, to get 300 parts per million, just to support the root growth and not do too much fertilizer, seeing as now she doesn't really need it anymore. Oh, just as I was putting her back into the shelf, check this out. Right there. The next eye is swelling. There's still time. If she wants to go for it, she can. There's still time. The way some of these new growths grow when the temperatures are nice and warm, <laughs> I'm not saying more blooms, but more roots before it gets cold. So Digbiana was recently repotted, well, recently as in this season, into a bigger pot. I didn't do much of a root ball cleanup. The root system looked marvelously fine. So it was a bit of a half and half repot, root ball cleanup, up pot. All she needed was a little bit more space and look at that root growth. It's just going absolutely mental. Look at that. Oh, this orchid has no problems. She is not stingy on growing roots. That is for sure. What a pleasure. And she also branches her older root system. So she is not a one trick pony. It's like, okay, I'm going to grow roots now. Works for me, girl. Works for me. You make orchid growing look easy. And I like orchids that are like that. So we're going to support the active root growth and a big orchid. Um, big and vigorous root growth. So we, in this case, are giving her 600 parts per million. The difference being, A, the size of the orchid compared to the durigan, and the amount of roots that this orchid grows in comparison to the durigan. This one is just on a completely different level in a league of her own. Love this orchid. The things she has to deal with in my conditions. <laughs> and here she is. Gorgeous. Next up, my little Easter Island orchid, <laughs> the mailman. Look at this growth. It's like Phoenix from the ashes. You would think that a fire raged through this orchid, burnt her to the ground. Nope, it's all cold damage. Look at this. Literally, I could take off the back bulbs. I'm not going to do that. I'm not disturbing her at all. Check this out no leaves. I've still got some eyes back here. They'll probably peter out, but this orchid, I don't know. She just collapsed on me coming out of the winter and into spring. One after the other, we had a teachable moment. So I hope whatever is going on with my collection when things go pear-shaped, that it helps somebody else out so that this is not for now. But she's been flushed regularly and she is also going to get flushed again today. And I just put alcohol on the rhizome. That's okay, we'll do it again. I just don't like to see scale. I don't think they're alive because I've been keeping a very close eye on this orchid. But <laughs> thinking is not knowing, as my dad used to say. You know, there's another way to say assuming. But I just use the word thinking, so I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, to my understanding, from what I can see on the top, all the roots are dead from here on back. That's all history. So if these little cretons that are crawling around in there are doing some of their own little maintenance in the pot, be my guest. You know, beauty and the beast. 
be my guest. Munch away. Alrighty. I'm going to keep some leka away from the base so that when new roots grow, they won't come up against any kind of obstacles. They can just go straight in. That is the plan. And because she is in active growth, yes. <laughs> But, you know, <clears throat> it's not like we have a huge orchid to contend with. And because of her setback status, all I'm doing is putting in half the reservoir with my 600 parts per million. And I'm topping it up with another glug of plain RO water to get my 300 parts per million. Just to support the growth, you know. We don't want it to be languishing. She's trying, so let's help her along. Now that would appear to be a lot of water because the pot has now settled down on the water level, which is something I normally do not do. But seeing as the roots back here are dead anyway, you know what? I want the humidity to rise up and through the orchid so that we can give this growth a chance. You can see that scale has also tried here. They should be dead. No harm, no foul. I'm just giving them another little brush if they needed convincing, especially on a very, very weak orchid. Let me just repeat that. Okay, we have one more, and yes, that could be a Fossarium candidate. Mimocatavola Francis Fox. Goodness me, though, it's taken some years. In the first year she's been with me, she did bloom beautifully. Then, of course, my winter conditions changed, and then her last blooming was a very pale and pathetic little sight. It was sad for a Francis Fox that is so vibrantly and gorgeously orange. But you see, she's been absorbing her back bulbs which is fine because if this is where all the old fossarium was go away i don't want you anymore anyway but we've been limping her along since the stress is out of her system getting her to recover and she grew a fantastic new growth here this year in 2023 i'm not expecting blooms but i do have something in the middle there would be nice because this growth grew during the perfect conditions and it grew very very quickly as well which was wonderful to watch. Now, I'm always looking for the roots. That is where I'm going to focus my attention on because your roots need to come out nice, white and shiny as they did last year. And it is possible that she is slowly growing out of her fusarium, which would be fantastic. But we won't know that until I repot her. And I won't repot her because clearly she's still got room in the pot. And I'm not going to stress her out with fiddling around with her too much. So. Myrmecatabolas are hungry, hungry. I have been cultivating this orchid with a lot of calcium nitrate and calcium and magnesium and the highest level of fertilizer concentration, even though the orchid herself is a little bit on the smaller side. 600 parts per million. Whatever is going on, if she's fighting back, we are going to help her out. But I am very, very encouraged by this. Very encouraged. I'm loving that. And here they are back on their shelf, back in their location, after having refreshed their tootsies. <laughs> Just in case, my call to action little graphics at the bottom, the subscribe, the ring the bell, the like, and the massive thank you at the end. Just in case it's a bit too small and not really visible, I would like to encourage you to please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video if you don't want to miss on the shorts and all the other activities on this channel. Hit the bell so that you don't miss out on any of the notifications if YouTube is so kind as to actually send them out. That would be awesome, but we can do our part. Hopefully one day YouTube will do theirs. Any questions you may have, the comments are there for a reason. If YouTube would allow them to stick, that would be amazing as well, but we can always try. <laughs> I hope that you enjoyed the video. I've got somebody here on the left that is chewing everything in his path. So, Siliano is making sure that his ladder is getting shorter and shorter because, you see, he's got other ways of getting to the top. And boy, is he fast. So anyway, if I can't raise my tripod up high enough, let me just say, look at him showing off now. There we go. Let me just say thank you so very much for watching. I so appreciate your time. It's always nice to spend the afternoon on the patio, especially during the summer. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition, though please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, Siliano. Yes, you're a good bird. Yeah, you're a good bird. <laughs>